Take it away, sir. Mm. Your craft. My craft, yes. <laughs> my art. What are you drawing today? I'm drawing Vanillites. And why that one? Uh, it's one of the first Pokemon that I designed, and it has a special place in my heart. How many times do you think you've drawn it? Ah, uh, it must be over a hundred now, I imagine. Do you have it down to a science at this point? Um, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to talk about your history at the studio, how long you've been working here? Sure. I started working here uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago this year. Um, yeah, I was working at a company called Genius Sonority before. And you just saw there was a job opening here, and you said, I could do that, I like Pokemon. Yeah, um, I submit my portfolio, and I think the people here had seen my work on the Pokemon uh, spin-off titles like Pokemon Troze and Pokemon Battle Revolution. Oh, sure. And uh, they liked my work, so I came in for an interview. And yeah, it went well. We had to draw um, some Pokemon designs during the interview. Was that stressful? It was a little bit stressful, yeah. But it, it was like original Pokemon designs. Like okay. You had to come up with an idea and a design within the space of 30 minutes. Did that concept ever make it as an actual Pokemon? Um, it didn't, but something similar came from it. It was Phantom. I drew like a tree Pokemon in the interview. Yeah. And that later on became the initial idea for the Phantom design. Is it tough to unify yours and all the artists' art style to look just like the Pokemon art style overall? That's not the difficult part, actually. In fact, the idea behind Pokemon is that it, it can have lots of different styles. Like, as long as the core concept of the Pokemon is true to the thinking of, of Pokemon, mm -hmm. then it's more fun to have uh, like the faces of Pokemon or the, or the drawing style of the Pokemon be a little bit different each time. Can you see it when you look at a lineup and say, ah, that's that artist's art style, that's that artist's yeah, art style? Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you can identify Pokemon by the people that drew them. Oh, that's fun. And I think that creates more kind of personality with the, in the lineup as well. Yeah. As long as the logic behind the designs and the, um, the base appeal is there, then it's good to have lots of different uh, kind of styles going on. Yeah, and, and how would you define your style? Um, well, I, I tend to end up drawing rather strange Pokemon. Like, uh, uh, I have kind of silly Pokemon, uh, or kind of whimsical Pokemon, like the Vanillite line, but then I've drawn kind of stronger looking uh, Pokemon like Buzzwall or okay. yeah, Guzzlord. They're quite fierce and intimidating, but they're aliens, so they're kind of a little strange at the same time. Right, yeah. right. I haven't drawn that many kind of conventional animal looking Pokemon. So I've drawn more kind of alien Pokemon or ghost Pokemon, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Does every artist have certain types they prefer? Um, yeah, you tend to see like, depending the, on the artist, they come back to certain motifs. Um, like you can tell who's a fa fan of like superheroes or, oh, you interesting. Know, or like, which designers like cute animals or that kind of thing. You can see the interests in the designs that they come up with. Right, right. And you love scary trees. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> How would you define the overall Pokemon art style? What is, if there's key words to it, what are they at this point? Um, I would say an important thing is that every Pokemon you feel like you could be friends with. like. Hmm. They can't just be intimidating. They can't just be scary. There has to be something there that makes you think, oh, I could, I could be friends with this Pokemon. They could be on my team. Uh, we could go into an adventure together. So for example, with Buzzwall, he's an alien, strong, macho looking Pokemon, but he has these kind of goofy macho poses that he does. That kind of silliness takes the edge off his intimidating visual. So you feel like, yeah, you could have a friendship with this. You person. know he's a bit of a poser. He's exactly. Really, yeah, yeah I got it. <laughs> Do you have uh, tips for adults or kids out there that like to draw on Pokemon on their own? Um, I would say try to express your originality through uh, your Pokemon designs. Like, if there are certain things that you're really interested in, or yeah, if you have your own particular style or your own particular uh, 
passion in in some areas. Like try to convey that through your Pokemon designs. Yeah. Like if you if you're into like making cool characters and uh, uh, characters that look really dynamic, try to show that through your Pokemon designs and don't be too caught up in like the superficial um, the superficial visual style of the Pokemon. Interesting. I think a lot of people watching this will uh, be convinced that you have one of the greatest jobs in the world. <laughs> uh, do you have any advice for people who want to work at Game Freak and design Pokemon? Uh, well, yeah, I would say concentrate on creating a good design portfolio. It doesn't have to be um, drawing Pokemon, but if you can show that you can draw creatures mm. and uh, appealing characters, then that's, that's really the important thing. You don't have to follow the superficial look of the Pokemon or, or anything like that to apply for a job, but you do have to show that you can create something appealing. I like the little separated beats, like your lines are never that long. Is, is there a logic to that? Uh, I started drawing that, drawing this way about only a year ago or so. Oh, like, really? Yeah, yeah. It's just something I, like I sketch a lot on my iPad and um, I just tried it out as a technique. I, mm. I liked it and so I've kept drawing like this recently. Nice, that looks great. <laughs> That's awesome. Would you want to sign it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Awesome.